so, um, good morning everybody. I just wanted to do a little talk to camera uh, about an issue close to my heart and something I'm passionate about. Um, and that is how much and in what ways um, we access the internet. Um, I'll explain all, hopefully in no more than about three or five minutes. So it's a, just a short sermon. Um, I think, uh, so first of all, uh, it's worth saying that we are all online uh, a lot now, even more than we were before. And that's a good thing, isn't it? Because we're all stuck in our homes. Uh, but if we go online, we can uh, keep working. We can keep connecting with our friends. Uh, we can access things that, that we need to do, uh, like church services maybe, or that are good for us, like the church services, but also the uh, the guy who does the PE lessons uh, or whatever. Um, it allows us to stay connected. Um, sometimes the stuff that comes through the internet to us is funny, cheer, cheers us up. Sometimes it's about connecting with friends and family pictures. It's really good. Um, sometimes it's um, really informative. It tells us the things we need to know. Uh, sometimes it is fake news, so we have to be careful. Uh, but on the whole, what I'm saying is, is it's great that we're connecting online in all these different ways. Um, and obviously we need to, to do that. Um, but um, this is where I have a just want to share a few things. What I'm what I'm not saying, what I'm not about to say, is that we need to um, to get offline um, in a in a kind of wholesale way. I'm saying that we just need to use to think about our time on online in terms of proportion and choice. How much and in what ways are we doing it? We need to be in charge of our internet use and not let the internet uh, be in charge of us. So just three things that uh, I wanted to share with you. So one of the things that's strange for me is that over the last couple of years, two or three years in my own life, I have tried to reduce and to harness my online activity um, in ways that are helpful. Um, I felt very prompted about that in my own faith. Um, and uh, it's been a battle I've not always won, uh, but I've tried to keep, if you like, the internet at, at arm's length when I've needed to uh, and access it when I need to. But uh, what's happened with, with, with us all being in quarantine because of coronavirus is that it feels like it's open season. We're all at home, we're all on our devices, and we could be 24-7. We could just have a stream of stuff happening to us all the time. We could fill our day uh, with the internet all the time. So that's why I find myself thinking again, is that entirely right? Is that completely the way we should do it? Uh, maybe we need a little bit of proportion and choice. I also accept uh, that um, some of this is my own personal thing. It's not necessarily the same for everybody. I also accept that I am fortunate enough to live in a home with people that I love, my family, but other people who might be alone or uh, need to connect with other people might want to be online more, whatever. You have to work it out for yourself. But let me just say a few things about why I think we should just be a little bit careful at this time when we're completely online all the time uh, about it. So uh, three things. The first is, is that particularly social media is built, it's designed to harvest our attention and it is aggressively good at it. So um, it just keeps the info coming. They want our eyes and our minds uh, glued into their particular platform. So the YouTube videos that keep rolling, uh, it's the uh, Instagram uh, feed that keeps rolling. Um, and it's uh, all the different things that we, um, uh, that we do that just kind of notifications keep coming divert our attention. Let's have a look at it. Um, so it, it doesn't ever stop. And that, that harvesting of our attention, I think is, is not good. Um, it's, it, it stops us from being productive in other parts of our life. Uh, and it means that it is kind of in control of us and we're not necessarily in control of us. So the, the, the part of, of being on the internet, perhaps to do with social media, in which it is a kind of an assault on our um, attention, uh, the way they often push adverts or they push uh, articles or things that they want us to do in order to keep us on, you know, that's not, that's not great. So Instagram, I loved Instagram, but it's just become very advert heavy and there's no way to buy out of the adverts on Instagram. And with the introduction of stories on Instagram, there's just, it's just the, co the quality of the content has diminished, in my opinion, my, my own view, personally. Facebook, I think it's often messy. It's just there's so much going on on there adverts, different things that you're being suggested, uh, and you, it's hard to harness it into the things that are really beneficial and useful for you. So beware of that. The second point is, is that there's a danger with online activity that we present a version of ourselves that is not real or authentic. We're always playing 
to the public. We're, all, we're, we're playing to a wider audience. We're building, if you like, a kingdom for our own sense of who we are. And we're choosing parts of who we are and we're presenting that. Uh, but actually, we're far, <coughs> far more complex and there are parts of us that are not great. And the people that are going to help us with that are the people that we live with. And that's even more the case now, where we're all in quarantine in our own homes with our loved ones, if we're able to be with people around us. Um, so our relationship with those people is going to be absolutely key. And it will be our spouses and our children who will know the kinds of people that we are and will help us to see that when we're blinded by our shadow side, if you like, the things that are not great, our bad habits, our addictions, our not great words, the, the things of us that are a bit ugly, we tend to forget that and we push the best version of ourselves onto the internet. Um, and that's not always great. I think that we need to work on the relationships of the people that were around us. Um, and that, that's something that uh, in my own life, um, I, I love putting things out there. I like making content. Ironically, this video is going to be put on the internet for people to watch. Uh, so, you know, I'm totally complicit here. I'm a content producer. Um, but what I found in the past is that I've often wanted to build a platform for Dave. I'm going to do this and this thing. People will think I'm great. That it'll get a certain number of likes. People might share it. Um, and what I've felt God say to me is that you're really called ultimately to love the people um, that you're with um, and actually that you have to live in community with. And that begins with, with, with wife and kids and family. It also is church. So that's why I think church is so important and valuable. One of the reasons is that we start to, to do that business of really getting to know each other and loving each other, despite our foibles and our differences. And I think the internet gives you a shortcut to a public platform without that hard, hard work. I could say a lot more about it, but that's the second idea. The third idea is that Jesus doesn't totally, completely spend his time in public spaces. Um, he was very popular with the crowds. I don't know if he would have used social media if he was around today. He might have used it a certain amount. But he also had a habit of dismissing the crowds, sending them away and going away by himself or with just the one or two closest friends to pray and be with God. Uh, so, so things like is isolation sounds very negative, uh, but being solitary in order to, to be with yourself, to learn how to be comfortable with yourself when you're alone is massive. And I think that's what that's so much of what Jesus does is where he cultivates a prayer life with God, his father. And he says, um, I am completely happy and content with who I am when I'm alone. And those that noise in my heart and that anx anxiety in my heart, it can be stilled and the peace of God can come to me. And he, and he, he pulls himself away from the crowds and he recognizes a danger there and he goes to, to solitary places and he, he spends time with God in prayer. And that feels scary. It feels tiring. Uh, it doesn't feel like something that maybe many of us have a lot of experience of. And I'm talking about myself here as, a, as someone who's a kind of cradle Christian, that it's been hard to extract myself from the internet and from social media in order to be alone with God and to, to look at the interior world of our heart. What is really happening in here? Spend some time walking around on the inside and, and ministering to God that you might find contentment and peace, which will allow you to be the better person to the people around you that you know and love. If it, was if it was good enough for Jesus, who was frankly the son of God, it should be good enough for us. It should be a normal part um, of our daily life. So how you do that now is tricky. Um, we're fortunate to have a garden. I, when the weather gets really good, I expect I'll try to go there for quiet. Um, just a few ideas. Don't take your phones and your tablets with you to, uh, to bed. Keep, keep your time at the start and end of the day free of that noise at least and try to find your quiet just as you begin the day. Lord, help me today. Uh, I commit my day to you. Or at the end of the day, give, give you thanks, God, for today. I keep a little journal where I just write two or three things I'm thankful for each day and one thing that I want to request of God. Um, and, it, and I just give myself two quiet minutes at the end of each day to do that. It doesn't have to be too much. It doesn't have to be hours and hours in solitude. Uh, but it's stilling ourselves and finding that time before God. Um, to have him minister um, to us, bring us his peace. Uh, and we can't do that if our devices are on. Uh, just a few other ways that I've tried to um, harness or, 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 or contain the internet. So I don't have any social media on my phone. I just find that it's too addictive for me. 
I uh, have WhatsApp because that's the, the primary way that a lot of us stay in touch and it's a bit like messaging. Um, but I also switch off all notifications so that I'm not constantly looking at my phone and seeing what's coming through. Um, I choose to go to my phone and check what's on it, not have it uh, come and uh, check on me, if you like. Now, I am not perfect on this. You can ask my own family. I'm on my phone still far too much. But uh, I keep the social media on the laptop and on the tablet so that I have to go to it and have an intentional time with it. And then I finish and then I, I disengage. And I, it's my phone that's with me, but I don't want my phone to have that kind of... Um, ability to boss my my attention uh, so that's one way that I've tried to to manage it uh, in isolation and, and and given this new arrangement I don't quite know how I'll do it but it might be that I'm online much more in the mornings try to do emails I uh, try to do the daily prayer be in touch with people and then I'm just going to clock off at midday um, perhaps for the rest of the afternoon and do other things develop a skill learn how to cook I'm trying to practice the piano more read spend time with the children talk to the people around me uh, and do things that are life-giving and nourishing in the real world, which is, I was going to swear there, which is unbelievably interesting and more complicated than social media will let us believe, uh, with the real people around me, rather than uh, necessarily through the screens. I've gone on for 10 minutes. I thought I said I would go on for three or five minutes, so I'd better stop. Just to recap, let's keep doing stuff online. I'm not trying to bash being online. Uh, I think it's awesome. I, I enjoy it. We're going to be doing things through the internet for church, how to stay in touch with friends as well, and all the things that I've said. Um, but let's do it in proportion, and let's be careful about what we choose to do. And what I'm suggesting is that most of us, I guess, at least if you're anything like me, are going to find that the internet will boss you. It will harvest your attention. It will um, cause you also to present a version of yourself that's not authentic. Uh, and it's not really, I think, what it means to follow Jesus, to be on there all the time, doing all of the things. Uh, we need to be able to cut back and have that quiet time um, with God. Um, uh, so that's my, my little thoughts, I guess, my little message for everybody. Please don't feel chastised or finger wagged. Uh, it's something you can pray about, you can give to God in prayer. Um, but I hope it will result in renewal for you, which it has for me, when I've been able to keep my internet uh, usage under control. I am a much happier person and I'm much more available for the people around me. And uh, so let's enjoy everything that it has to offer, but in moderation, in proportion and with choice uh, and keep it on a leash. Don't let it keep us on a leash. Uh, and may that be a fruitful and a happy way for us to be in our isolation for the next few weeks or months. Do be in touch if this has touched a nerve very happy to pray for you or to talk about it more. More, You may completely disagree. Uh, I'd be really, like, really happy to have a discussion about that if you do disagree. Um, uh, but I will... Uh, you know what? I had one final thing I wanted to say, and so I'll say it. Um, this business of, of social media harvesting our attention. Um, somebody's once said, and I'm afraid I can't remember who, that prayer, pure prayer... Is, is, is focus and attention. Um, so, so actually, when, when we're totally, totally kind of locked into to our screens, it's as if we're praying to it. When we switch off our screens, and it's hard because our minds run over the place and our hearts are busy, and we still ourselves before God and begin to place our attention on him, Bible verses can help with that. Just a Bible verse to help you to lock in on God. That attention to God is where real prayer happens. God bless.